and welcome to another edition of Chiadini's Kitchen Video Game Recipes Made Real. Now this week's episode is extremely special because we're going to try our hand at making honest to goodness beer. A dark beer to be precise, we're making Cadwenian Stout from The Witcher 3. So there are all sorts of drinks you can find in The Witcher 3, from the excitingly named Very Old Wine or Medium Strength Alcohol to the legendary Mahakaman Spirit. Quite a few of these sound like paint thinner though, to be perfectly honest, so I thought a nice stout would probably be a better option. So without any further ado, here's what you'll need to make Cadwenian Stout. Water, hops, malt, barley, yeast, a mash tun, an industrial sized brewing kettle, an immersion cooling coil... Right, see, the thing is, if you've ever seen this show before, you'll know my kitchen isn't exactly well equipped to make, well, anything, let alone vast quantities of beer. So I've come to Hackney Brewery in East London, where they can actually make beer in vast quantities. This is my friend John Swain. Hello, Hello. John. Uh, what are you doing? What are we doing? We're brewing two and a half thousand litres of stout but uh, we'll steal a bit and do something special. Great, so other people are doing all the hard work and we're just going to nick a bit. Correct. Excellent. Hackney Brewery is, well, it's a brewery based in Hackney in East London and is run by my good friends Pete and John and their two dogs, Gruff and Bruce. John was kind enough to invite me along to one of their brew days and make a little bit of their big stout brew into a very special Witcher 3 tipple. All I had to do was turn up, pay attention and not get under anybody's feet, basically. So I've arrived at the brewery at 8 in the morning while head brewer Darren is busy mashing in. What that means is he feeds all the malt and barley into this massive hopper which takes those grains, runs them up this pipe and then down into the mash tun which is filling with lots of very hot water. Once everything has gone into the mash tun the lid is closed and everything is left to steep. After a while the liquid is drawn out of the tun and sprayed back over the grains by something called the sparging arm which you can just see going round and round here. Basically this ensures as much of the good stuff as possible is taken from the grains and put into the fluid, which for the purposes of brewing is known at this point as the wort, and to be honest it's something John can explain far better than I can. So I'm now holding in my hand what I have been reliably informed is the wort. John, what's the wort? Wort is uh, where the grains have been steeped in hot water and the starch is converted into sugars. And uh, yeah, so it's essentially just sugary water. This is effectively what super malt is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, and I'm told it tastes like hot chocolate. It does. It actually does. It's like proto beer. The wort is then transferred from the mash tun into the kettle which, as the name suggests, is where the wort gets boiled. This process takes about an hour and it produces loads of really good smelling steam. I wish I could accurately convey it to you at this point because there really is no smell quite like a brewery when it's doing its thing. At this point the brewery is done with the grains which are scooped out of the mash tun and bagged up ready to go off and feed a bunch of horses, which is nice. So the wort's now boiling away basically um, and then it's going to be transferred off into a vat where they're going to add a bunch of uh, other ingredients including yeast so it can start becoming beer. But uh, you may be wondering, okay, we're brewing a stout, but what exactly makes it Cadwenian? Well, the region of Cadwen in The Witcher, you may well know, is famous for having uh, Caer Morhen in it. Caer Morhen, of course, being the place where the witches are trained. And obviously, before you become a witcher, you have to undergo some mutations, the, the uh, first of which is the trial of grasses. So, having talked to John about how we can make this into a proper Cadwenian stout, we've basically decided Grasses, that sort of botanicals, let's add some exciting hops. So Swain, what's next? So currently the uh, hot wort is in the kettle at the moment, boiling away. It's been boiling for almost an hour. As soon as that's up, we're going to transfer 30 litres into this vessel, which has a cooling coil in it, where we're going to drop it down to 80 degrees, chuck in loads of hops, uh, let it steep for a little bit, cool it down to about 20 degrees after that, transfer into the fermenter, pitch the yeast, and leave it a week. Cool. You make that sound incredibly easy, but it's not that simple, is it? It's uh, We'll like... see how it goes. All right. <laughs> Pretty good. All right. 
So, dump the hops in. The, the entire lot? The whole lot. The whole lot, alright, cool. Uh -huh. So this is a variety I haven't used before. Yeah, you've never used these hops before, eh? No, so I'm intrigued. They're a new British variety that they're supposed to have new world properties. New uh, world properties? Like, you know, fruity. Huh. But oh, they smell really good. It's like quite citrusy. Surprisingly, surprisingly aromatic. You're surprisingly aromatic. Okay. Now with the main one, you're not putting in as much in the way of hops. Uh, hardly any one hops go in the actual um, beer that we're making today. It's, uh, it's part of the Stooge project, so a lot of fruit's going to go into it, and chocolate, and lactose, and yeah, coffee. Coffee's going in one of them. We split it into three, so there's a variety of one batch. So three Stooges, got it. Uh -huh. Right, I'm going to stir that in. All right. what I'm doing. Look at that. Sticky mess. It smells amazing. So it's a, it's just shy of 80 degrees in there right now. And Absolutely. Obviously if we put the yeast in there it would denature, is that right? Yeah, it would just die. So the Talk me through the slinky in the middle of the thing. It's a cooling coil, so we'll run cold water through it and drop it down to about 20 degrees. All right. Shouldn't take that long. We'll agitate it to kind of keep everything moving in there so it drops quicker. As soon as it's down to temperature, transfer it out, ready to go. Excellent. So, cold water in, goes around the coil. I suppose it goes that way, around that way, and out the door. Right. Um, I've just got to sort the fermenter out. All right. Your responsibility yep. is to... That should be going now. Yep, that is going. To move this uh -huh. and make sure it goes down to 20 degrees. Okay. Like but not lower. Not lower. So what do I do when it hits 20? Uh, pull that off. Okay. There you go. Uh, by what? Just... just... Okay. And it will stop. I should be back by then anyway. Okay, fine. Right, time to agitate. So correct me if I'm wrong, but this yeast is now going to convert all of the sugars that have been released in the mash tun and the sparging process into in, alcohols. In the mashing, there are, there's a process. So the starches are converted by um, mm -hmm. uh into fermentable and non-fermentable sugars. There's two types of amylase, it's alpha and beta, and then uh, depending on what the mash temp was, Mm -hmm. and how long it's left for, and the pH converts it all into fermentable and non-fermentable sugars. Delightful. Right, so we finished the transfer into the fermenter, and now that goes in the fridge for a week or so? We're in the fridge, yeah. All right. So it's been just over a month, as you can probably tell from the beard and 
hair growth. But anyway, in that time the beer has been fermented, it's been dry hopped, it's been kegged and it's been carbonated. All of that meaning that it's now ready to be put into bottles and sent to thirsty witches across the land. And John's going to show me how. First of all, yep. we purge the bottle. So this line is CO2. Uh -huh. <coughs> so the bottle fills full of carbon dioxide and pressure all the oxygen out of it. So it'll pick up any bacteria. And the beer which makes beer go off. Right. So now we turn it down to the beer side. Let it just fill up slowly. It should just equalise the pressure out. Hopefully. Slowly release the top pressure and it should just counterfeit yeah. and not break out. Just fit it right up. Bubbles off. Turn this off. Sterilised, ready in the capper. This will probably go everywhere now. Let's just release it. Beautifully done. And then quick as you can, capper. See it. Bottle. <laughs> and then we'll rinse it to get all the excess beer off it so it doesn't go sticky. There you have it. Amazing. The first one off the production line. As you can see, I am being very, very useful. Don't worry, I'll get you to do one in a minute. Oh shit. Turn it to right. no, right. yeah. So that's going that way. So yeah, that's right. Gassing. Purging. So yeah. Oh yeah, you wanna get you can move your hand, yeah. Yeah, just hold it. And if you just wait it will stop. Oh it'll stop. It will yeah, it will kind of get to about here and then just kind of stop. Okay. Go, I can feel my hand hold confidence. There you go. Yeah, just a little bit to let the, let the gas out. No, it's fine. Just a little bit to let the gas out. You made this look so easy. It's great, it's not fobbing. Great. It's good. The hand is freezing. It's not what? Fobbing? Fobbing, it's where the foam breaks out. Yeah. And you get like crazy head. But that's really good. Great, so what's the next step? Because when it gets up to the top. Just let it, it overflow. 
Keep going, keep going, keep going. Let it out, let it out, let it out. Okay, lock it off there. Yep. Okay, and turn it to point you. And then you... Have you got a cap on the capper? Oh, yeah. Okay. This is the bit. Okay. I'm going around this side. It's good. It's fine. There's no rush. Hey! I actually buckled some beer. That's amazing. My little baby. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Let's crack that baby open later. Yes, definitely. Tasty baby, Johnny. Tasty baby. Tasty, tasty baby. <laughs> <laughs> Some of my beautiful children. <laughs> And that, friends, is how we made Cadwenian Stout from The Witcher 3, and to be honest, I think it tastes pretty bloody good. With so much of it kicking around though, it'd be churlish of me to keep it all to myself, so time to see what my two favourite guinea pigs think. Right, so Chris and Aoife, obviously the last time we were on this sofa and I brought you something boozy to taste. Uh, oh god. It didn't go well. For oh god. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's alright. What are you talking about? Um, I can promise you, let me just get this branded bag out. Uh, there's no meat in this whatsoever. I would like very much to introduce you to my son. Uh, this is a Cadwenian stout. Oh um, my god. It's much like me, it's a little bit bitter. Um, <laughs> Jake's after his father. Um, this was bottled just yesterday, in fact. Oh, oh it wow. made a good noise when uh, you opened it. I like that. Pretty sure this one was bottled by me. Aww. So I'm going to give you a little bit of piece. Ooh, it's caramelly. Good glug. Mm, there you go. I don't know what you. to say about beer. Just, uh, I, we'll, <laughs> I like make, it, we'll make it up opens. as we go along. It's I mean, fine. I can tell you already, it's quite, it's wow. very hoppy, it's a bit fruity. Oh no, I was going to say, I was going to say all three of those words. <laughs> you can't say <laughs> hoppy to describe beer. That's like you describing that right. world. Absolutely can cool. with this one. Okay, fine. So anyway. It looks very fizzy. Is it fizzy? Oh, it smells It was nice. carbonated. With stout, a CO2 line. A carbonated stout. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure about that. I think it smells oh. great too. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, Jesus yeah, Christ. Slancha. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, Slancha, you were raised right. my barn. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's not what I was expecting. Right? That's really good. That's quite Ooh. nice. You sound really surprised. Yes. <laughs> Can you, do you not remember what happened last time? I genuinely bought a beer at a wanky hipster bar last night that <sighs> tastes like that and cost me more than five pounds. Yep. Well, they know what they're doing at the brewery. That is that is really refreshing. And basically, I managed not to fuck it up too much, which I, is nice. I can't believe it. That's, no. just, that's genuinely good. I would be happy if I bought that. Not for more than five pounds, but like if I spent some money on it, I wouldn't I wouldn't be upset. No. Good. Well, I'm well glad. Done you. Right. Well, that's your verdict anyway, um, and it seems like it's a good one. Yeah. Um, but there's one more verdict we should really get about this beer, and that's the verdict of Geralt of Rivia himself. Hi, I'm Doug Cockle, uh, also known as Geralt of Rivia in The Witcher. Um, I was sent by Eurogamer, from Eurogamer, this fantastic bottle of beer. It's Kedwenian Stout, and its name is Trial of the Grasses. Now, Johnny at Eurogamer, who sent me this, wants me to taste test it and tell you what I think. So, I think I'm going to do that. By the way, this was made at Hackney Brewing Company. So, should we have a go? I think we should. You heard the pop, it's real. Ah! Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Alright. Here we go. Trial of the grasses. If I go all funny or something or die, you know, you know why. Now that is a mighty fine Kedwinian stout. <laughs> they cost more. Merry Christmas. And that, friends, is how we made Kedwinian stout from The Witcher 3 and got Geralt of Rivia's seal of approval. Still doesn't quite feel real, to be honest, which means there are probably quite a few thank yous, I should say, in bringing this episode off because um, I've wanted to make it happen for a very long time and I am stoked that it actually went ahead. So, um, obviously, thank you to Doug Cockle for sampling the beer and giving us his best Geralt of Rivia and a massive thank you to John Swain and everyone at Hackney Brewery um, for letting us come along and basically tit about 
in a brewery for a day. It was a really wonderful experience and hopefully you enjoyed coming along for the ride. Um, if you're interested in Hackney Brewery, you can find them online, just search Hackney Brewery, or if you're of legal age and you want to buy some of their beers, they're on Honest Brew, I think. Um, so yeah, there's nothing else really for me to say other than thank you so much for joining me for another very special edition of Chiadini's Kitchen. Do keep those recipe suggestions coming in because you know what, we have a lot of fun on this show um, and it's, yeah, it's a really good giggle. Um, that's not it from me for, for this year. There's one more episode, so do look out for that. In the meantime, there are plenty more videos that you can watch. They're surrounding my face right now. So thank you once again for watching. Thanks to Doug Cockle and Hackney Brewery. And I'll see you soon.